Welcome back to Oak Haven. It's spring here, uh, March 26th. We wanted to go through and talk about some of the spring wildflowers that are coming up. Our last video was on Lesser Celandine, which is an invasive, uh, very aggressive, uh, non-native plant that is choking out wildflowers. Uh, we wanted to switch gears a little bit, be, be a little more positive here and show you what should be here. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the native wildflowers. Now, we're talking about native wildflowers of the woodlands, not native wildflowers that you would find in open prairie areas. Um, wildflowers come up in the spring because this is the time for these plants to take advantage of the fact that there isn't a canopy. So there's nothing up above us that's blocking the light uh, getting down to the forest floor. So the, the spring ephemerals take advantage of that by uh, producing their leaves and they, they work very quickly to get through their whole life cycle in the spring here. So they'll send up leaves, flowers, produce fruit right away um, before the canopy fills in. So one of the first flowers that we talk about in the, in the spring is this one here, which is called, appropriately enough, appropriately enough, Arbinger of Spring. It's also called uh, pepper and salt, because if you look at the anthers, the little tops of the, the male portion of the flower, they turn black and you end up with these little black dots against the uh, the white petals. That's Arbinger of Spring. Their, their flower is fairly inconspicuous. You can walk right over these things, but right now the, the flower is more conspicuous than the, the leaves. The leaves will grow out and over the next few weeks you'll no, you won't notice the, the flower so much, but the leaves will grow out a little bit more. So that's Arbinger of Spring. So we were going to talk about Spring Beauty right here, uh, and then Kimber came over and sat on top of it. So um, we'll have to find some other Spring Beauty for you, or maybe we can get her to move. Come on, let's move over and see if you've left anything here. Thank you very much. <coughs> this beauty you find in Spring is Spring Beauty. The leaves look almost grass-like. This is... Uh, Virginia Spring Beauty, or Claytonia virginica. If you look at the, the petals, they have these delicate pink lines on it. Technically, that's supposed to be to direct uh, pollinators into the center of the flower. I'm never sure why pollinators need to have lines uh, as landing strips into the center of flowers, but that's, uh, that's what they talk about. Spring Beauty is one of the first flowers to come up in the spring, and it seems to last forever. I feel like you get into almost early summer and you still have spring beauties uh, blooming. We also have cutleaf toothwort over here, but I think there's some bigger ones over here we can talk about. <clears throat> cutleaf toothwort, you can see that the leaves are very dissected, cutleaf toothwort. It's in the, the mustard family, the Brassicaceae, which we used to call the Cruciferae. Cruciferae because plants in this family have a cross-like flower. You can see that there's four petals and a cross there, so like a crucifix. So that's a cutleaf toothwort. This is another mustard that's growing right now. This is purple cress. You can see it also has kind of a between white and lavender flower. Um, the diagnostic thing for it, if you look at the leaves, underside of the leaf, is just an amazing purple. So that's purple cress. As we walk, walk along the path, there's a huge patch of white trout lily, or fawn lily, uh, here that's really pretty. The <coughs> Trout lily, named trout lily because the leaves have this mottled brown and green, looks like a trout skin, and then it has this dangling flower. Trout lily is a monocot, so um, it uh, has parallel veins on the, the leaves. The, these flowers will open up more. You can see one over here that's more open, and you can see the bright yellow anthers inside of there. So you notice the, the spotted leaves of the um, trout lily. Right next to it here, come over back this way, is a similar leaf that's not spotted at all. This is ramps, 
or wild leek. This is a very popular forage plant. Uh, you can eat the leaves um, as a as a like a green onion, or you can dig it up and there's a, a white bulb underneath there that's uh, that's very good to eat. Um, they tend to be over harvested, so you don't really want to harvest the bulb, and you definitely want to get landowner permission before you go and you harvest uh, someone's leeks. We have pretty many of them, so we feel pretty good about harvesting them occasionally. Um, if you're interested in leeks. We have a whole video on harvesting uh, wild leeks or ramps that you might be interested in. If we get up off the ground for a minute, this is spice bush. Spice bush also blooms in the in the spring. Pretty flower. It, it has this uh, yellow cast on things. You, you notice this is a smaller flower. This is this is actually the the female flower. So this is a female bush. Spice bush is dioecious. Dioecious meaning die two. Ecious, I guess, is house two houses. Um, the flowers are on separate plants. So this is a a female plant. So it will produce the red berries later on in the uh, in the summer. Now it, the flower, while it's very pretty, is not as as bold as the male flower. So let me go over here and we'll look at a a male flower. So if you look at this, the flower tufts are just a little bolder. It's a little more noticeable. Uh, when you walk through a woods, you're more likely to see male spice bush than you are female spice bush for whatever reason. The flowers are interesting. If you have a hand lens, um, it, it's interesting to look at them because the flowers, you can tell, like the flowers, the, the male flowers have infertile female parts and the, the female flower has infertile male parts uh, that just don't uh, uh, don't become useful. <laughs> We're going to take a break from looking at wildflowers for a minute here. You can see this area, you can see this honeysuckle stump here. So this area was covered with honeysuckle. There's still, and here's a little honeysuckle. So when we're, when we're walking through, we'll go ahead and weed out little honeysuckles. Um, at the same time, there's also some garlic mustard here. Garlic mustard is another very invasive non-native plant. If I get it at the base, oh, <laughs> bad. <clears throat> I took a little more work to get that out, but I wanted to get the root out. So garlic mustard, um, which again will overthrow this area or over um, overgrow this area and uh, outcompete the the native wildflowers. Both garlic mustard and honeysuckle both are alleopathic so they produce chemicals that they'll send out into the soil that will suppress the native wildflowers so it's good to get rid of them. Here's a flower we don't have a lot of. Hepatica. You can see it has this pretty white flower. It comes in purplish colors. Uh, it's very pretty. And if you look at the leaves, these leaves were formed last year and then stay evergreen through the winter laying on the ground here. And it's kind of uh, liver shaped. So based on the, the doctrine of signatures, uh, the idea that plants take the shape of uh, the part of the body that they're, they're meant to be curative for, um, hepatica was used for uh, liver ailments. Um, so it, it, it really, I, I haven't found any science to back that up and it's really not used even by herbalists, I don't think, uh, for that anymore. Uh, but that was kind of the idea. It, it is in the, the buttercup family. So buttercups as a whole have chemicals in them that are poisonous um, if eaten raw. So um, you have to be careful with any of these types of things. So I told you we were going to stay positive, but I will point out this as we're walking by. This is a Japanese honeysuckle. You can see it's this vine twining up the, the stem here. It's something that's very obvious in the spring because not much has, is leafed out this much. Japanese honeysuckle is evergreen, so there are leaves year-round, but it, it definitely has, has started to expand now in the spring. Uh, very invasive, uh, non-native weed, hard to get rid of. You can see it's it's growing up and um, it will cover small trees. 
this pretty little white flower is bloodroot. Um, and if you were to dig it up, the, the root does have a bloody colored sap in it, but I would encourage you not to do that because it is, um, you know, a fairly conservative, uh, rare, rarish uh, spring wildflower right next to this wild leek here. Bloodroot is interesting because it flowers and then this leaf comes up like this big shield and the leaf will continue to grow until the leaf gets much bigger than the, than the flower and then it will set a, a seed pod there. So this is new that I haven't seen other days. We have Dutchman's breeches right here. Uh, you can see it's just starting to come out. It's like in bud here. It's starting to open up here. We will talk more about this in other videos. The, the goal is that this is one week. We will continue to come out once a week and post new videos about what's coming up. Tell you a little bit about the plants. Uh, if you're interested in that, go ahead and hit your uh, turn on notifications so that you'd know when we, we post a new video. So we appreciate you coming following along if you are interested in this type of thing uh, please hit the subscribe button if you like this video hit the like button other than that thanks for joining us